Um, the executive director, Social Action in Lake Chad, Isaac Iswaka, joins us now to talk to us more about the challenges of, of people in that region caused by the drying up of the Lake Chad Basin. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at 10. We've heard this so many times, and that was why Nigeria spearheaded the recharge of the Lake Chad Basin with other countries just last year. Uh, are you saying that is the only solution on the table you think uh, will be effective? Well, the, the recharging of the Lake Chad by, you know, channeling water from the Ubangi River in Central, from Central Africa Republic is uh, the boldest uh, option that is on the table. Uh, it is a huge undertaking if it's going to come to fruition. It is an expensive idea. It will cost, estimated to cost about $15 billion, and it will involve the cooperation of uh, several countries in the Lake Chad Basin, in particular Central Africa Republic, Cameroon, Nigeria, and Chad, and it will take a lot of international cooperation, the UN system, and, uh, and the global community generally to, to, to make this happen. And so that is, that, that, that is what option. Uh, however, we recognize that uh, there are other options that uh, are on the table and that the government is considering, and that we are encouraging the government to, to consider. You know, one of those options is to use uh, groundwater uh, reserves from, from Borno State, from the metropolitan Madiguru area. That is an option. Uh, but the, the point that we have to make is that uh, the Lake Chad just didn't dry up. Uh, it, it was caused by, by poorly conceived and implemented development projects that were, in, in a way, responses to climate change from the 1970s and 19. 80s. Because of the droughts in the 1970s and 1980s, the governments in Nigeria, in Cameroon and Chad were, you know, in some ways uh, compelled to construct dams for irrigation purposes. And while it would seem that those were positive uh, development, those were uh, projects that will improve agriculture, at least on the short term, the result was that by damming the rivers that used to supply the Lake Chad with water, they, they, they basically stopped the river of the water supply. And what, what that shows is that there was no consideration of the, the impact, the long-term impact of those, those, those projects. And it is important that going forward that there should be a review of those projects to see even the possibility of opening the channels that have been blocked over the past years. And of course, uh, when you look at all of those things and they try to affect the changes, what about the effects now? There is a serious arms proliferation in the Lake Chad Basin and of course, stretching to the areas affected. How do you think that governments in the affected countries can mop up these arms? Well, before we talk about arms, you know, we need to talk about displacement. Uh, it is, we all know about Boko Haram, we all know about the, the enormous humanitarian crisis that has been engendered by the Boko Haram crisis in Borno State alone. Right now there are about 3 million people that are in displacement. Uh, they're living in, in shelters, in camps, formal and informal camps, and in host communities. Uh, some of them are in, in other, parts, other parts of the country, in, in, in Adamawa State, in Cameroon, in, in Chad. Uh, there are displaced people in all, all of those places. Uh, but we recognize that displacement didn't start with Boko Haram in the, in the Lake Chad Basin. Uh, displacement started right from the 80s. That the, 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 the dams that were constructed, for example, it has been established that the dam that was constructed by Cameroon in the 1970s caused displacement of about 800,000 people in Nigeria. Uh, that is something that people don't hear about. Okay. We also know from, from, from our research that dams that have been built even in the northwest right. region of Nigeria caused displacement. And it was the condition of displacement that generated the conditions for crisis in the form of the Maitasine uprising in 1980 and even the Bacolari uprising of 1980. People that were displaced as a result of dam construction, you know, protested. And the result uh, was that, uh, you know, the, 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 the government sent troops and basically opened fire on, on unarmed protesters. We saw that also in, in Borno State when uh, Boko Haram started escalating their conflict in, in around 2000, uh, 2009. The, the, state, the Nigerian state responded 
by massacring, you know, members of the Boko Haram and even people that were, you know, in the streets. You know, we saw pictures on social media okay. of uh, the police and the military. All right, I'm sure uh, you have a lot. To, I'm sure you have a lot to say, but we we'll just have to civilians. So it, it is the way that the state has responded to the original displacement that has been caused by poor development programs that has, in, in, in a way, instigated the, the insurgencies in, in, different, in different areas. All right. In essence, you're saying that there is need for a review of the cause of the drying up of the Lake Chad Basin and then to address the humanitarian situation there. Executive Director, Social Action in Lake Chad, Isaac Oswalker, thank you for your time on TVC News at 7.